a spicy and attractive combination with all the stuff from the supermarket. I have dry tomato, I have olive, garlic, tarragon, feta cheese, a little bit of pimientos, some lemon juice, olive oil, pepper, mix it together in a beautiful iceberg wrap here. Here we are. This is it. Savory iceberg cup. It can be a first course, a salad, or a light lunch. I am Jacques Pepin, and this is Fast Food My Way. Happy cooking. Production funding for this series has been brought to you by Cuisinart, with the next generation of food processors. From bread dough, to pizza, to stir fries, we do the work to save you time. Cuisinart, the next generation. And by Scharfenberger, makers of fine artisan dark chocolates, recipes available at scharfenberger.com. And by Spectrum Organics, a purveyor of fine culinary oils and condiments, Spectrum, the taste of goodness. And by OXO Good Grips, makers of kitchen tools that make everyday living easier. When in doubt, start with dessert. And that's what we are doing today in our menu. I'm starting by making a dessert, very easy type of dessert because I'm using a tortilla which I always have in my refrigerator at the base for a pear tart. And uh, that's a nice way of doing it. And uh, I use those actually for pizza. I use them for many different types of things. You get them eight, 10 inches. Of course, you buy the flour tortilla, not the one with mazzarina, that is with corn. And what you do there, I have about a tablespoon and a half of butter here uh, that I put in the oven for a minute to melt. Put a bit of sugar on top of this. I will dip that in there, that will caramelize, and then leave it underneath, and I will have a beautiful caramel under the tart here. And that's about all there is to it. And then pear. I am using Bartley pear here. Basically, any pear will do. Uh, some are more ripe than others, and that's always the, the problem with fruit. You know, the riper it is, the less time it has to cook to, to, uh, to cook. So here, one, two pairs should do it for four people with our beautiful red pair. You will tend to use larger pair for that dessert rather than the small um, pair which are too hard, like sickle pair. Two. Well, this one is extra. Just put them in a wedge around, like if you are doing a flower, you know. This way. And you continue with the inside in the same ma manner. Try to, to stagger it so that, like the petal of a flower, you know, if it's too big, you cut a piece. Well, it should be just about right. Two more. One here. One here, one here. This one I can put in that corner. This one here, and that's about it. Okay. On top of that, you want to put couple of tablespoons of sugar. That's one tablespoon, oh, I suppose. Maybe one and a half at the most. And uh, maybe a tablespoon of butter. Tarts in France are usually butter and sugar. And that's basically it. Now, if you want to put spice in it, like apple, you know, people would put cinnamon or thing like this, and it's fine, but it brings you another taste altogether. Okay. This is on a silk pad, so-called, 
nothing stick to it and it's important because it's going to create a caramel there and it will tend to stick. So that goes into the oven, 400 degree, about 30 minutes, 20, well, 25, 30 minutes. Here we go, maybe I put it on top. Okay, good. The dessert is on the way. So it's time for the first, first course of the meal. And today we're going to do Nantuke best scallop in a mignonette sauce. And later on, we're going to do an Italian sausage patty with a mezza arena. And the pear is our uh, dessert. So there I'm going to start with those tiny scallop. You can see those here. Those are, I mean, I know we get them in the, on the, on the, on the East Coast in Boston, certainly what we call Taylor scallop, and they come in different parts of the country. You can insert your knife in the, in the corner. There is a little hole here. And uh, scrap it underneath to open. And you see that scallop here, a whole scallop with everything which goes with it. There is two abducting muscle. So certainly you have the gut around that you, you remove, of course. But then in addition to this, very often you have that, uh, that bright red or orange, which is the, the, the raw, you know, or the egg. And this is prized often, but on those small ones, we don't really usually take it. They just will slide out of that, uh, make sure the whole thing will slide out, just to keep, whoops, they are slippery, to keep the center of your scallop. Those are tiny bay scallop, as you see, and very, very sweet. I think I'm going to eat that one. Mm. Good. If you cannot get those tiny bay scallop like this, Niantic Bay, you can always take larger one and cut them into pieces like this, and it's fine. However, when you get the large scallop, you usually would remove the abducting muscle. For example, here you can see it. So this is the abducting muscle, that little piece of whiter things. Okay. So we're going to do a very simple type of uh, sauce here with, um, with shallot, a kind of a mustard sauce. So finely chopped shallot, about a tablespoon one or two tablespoons of chopped shallots. Okay, mustard, French mustard. Here, yeah, French type mustard. Salt, pepper. So we're doing basically a mustard sauce. A dash of a good red wine vinegar. Here we are, and certainly there you want to use the best possible oil you can get. you know, to complement the taste of the scallop here. About three to one, three, 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 four to one. I would tend to have it a bit less acid and my wife will make it usually too acid for me. So I'll test this. That's pretty good. So we can season our scallop in there. And you don't have to marinate them long because this is pretty potent and those are very delicate scallops. So we can present them in this. But I want to do a garnish for that. And the garnish is going to be done with cucumber. You can peel it or leave it whole. If you want to peel it, you go in one streak like this. You know, from this end that you cut makes it easier. Uh, you can leave it whole, but in any case, often I use the cucumber just like this. You know, I keep peeling until I see the, the seed, turn it on the other side, and continue peeling it in the same way. And I do a salad with this and do the side in the same way. And I have quite a lot out of one cucumber, as you can see here a good vegetable peeler, so that's good. What we are going to do is to take a few of those large strips 
of cucumber, put them together, and I'll do a julienne of it, you know, just roll it together. And cut them into a spaghetti-like mixture, you know, what we call a julienne. To serve that, and the crunchiness of that will go well with the scallop. Then we'll put a couple of radish here. Now, and cut the ends of the radish. So here you go for not only the, you have the color, uh, but as well, but basically for me, the aesthetic is relatively important. You know, it should look good, but it should especially taste good and in little dice. Okay, here we are. I can't even use those best scallops to serve them in. Different way of doing it. I could do a nest, a nest of um, of the julienne of cucumber here. Put my scallop in the center. Scallop. And a bit of radish on top. It's very fresh, crunchy. The other one I'll do, uh, maybe I'll put that first. like a dozen or so of scallop on top. Maybe a little bit of this on top of it. Yeah. And uh, some of the, the radish around. This is good also for cocktail party. Sometimes I do it even without much of, uh, without the mustard even. I serve it just like this when I can get those scallop during the right time of the year. Just by itself. It's great. Put that around if people want to grab a little bit of it. It with it. Here we are. Some of this. And this is the Nantuke Best Scallop in Mignonette Sauce. You know, a great wine to have with this is uh, a Muscadet here from the, from the Loire Valley. It's uh, very mineral strong, and it's always great with oyster, scallop, or thing like this. That'd be perfect with that wine. Scallop be great with that. And now, on to the main course. We're going to do Italian, Italian sausage patty, again, in our style of using the supermarket. I go to the supermarket and I can buy those uh, Italian sausage. Don't forget to remove the, you know, the casing. But uh, at my market, very often, they come even without casing in the form of patty, like this, just as people use them for breakfast. So what I do, I take about a pound of this here, and I'm going to put a little bit of uh, paper flake because this one, or not as seasoned as the one I conventionally use, salt. Oh, there is enough pepper again, a little bit. I'm going to put a uh, pumpkin seed here, a bit of mushroom in there. Put a bit of garlic in it, maybe one clove of garlic. So you can make your own hamburger like, you know, in a sense like this. Some chives in there. Why not? Here we are. And I always add some bread to it, like a country bread to absorb some of the juice. 
That should be enough, or maybe too much even. I have all kind of recipe that I use leftover bread. Note that this one is leftover, it's still fresh. Well, that should be more than enough here. Put the bread in there. A good cup, cup and a half. Then, the best way to mix it is really with your finger. There is no other way. And I have a pound of meat, as I said here, and for four patties, so that gives me about, about four ounces of meat per person, which should be fine. Here we are. That's it. And I can... I think I'll put a dash of olive oil in there. And we'll start the patty. When you do that, try to break it in half. And each half in half so that you have about the same size patty. Yeah, that should be about fine. There we are. You know, we use, I use when I do pâté, for example, in, uh, in, uh, in French cooking, we often do pâté for the holiday. And very often I use the meat like that from the supermarket, again, all season. And then I do addition to this, sometimes it's pheasant, sometimes it's whatever, but uh, it's an easy way of using the supermarket, which is uh, what the type of cooking that I'm doing is all about, you know? Using the supermarket, other prep cook. You go there, you have things bone out for you, the mushroom are sliced if you want, the spinach are clean, and it's a great way of doing it. I'm going to wash my hand. Good. So this... is going to go full blast now, and I'm going to cover it. Because it's not the type of meat that you want to do rare, of course, the pork, you know, even with all the seasoning. So it will take but a couple of minutes on each side, it's fine. And during that time, I'm going to cook some corn to go with it. I have a cup of, uh, of uh, grits here, or polenta, or masarina, you can choose. And four cups of water. I'm going to put a good dash of, uh, of salt in this. And that cooks very fast, it's easy to use, and we love it at home. Let's see how that thing is going. It's doing pretty well. I think I'm going to move it here. It goes faster on that stove. Here. And uh, when you put this, you want to put it gently like this, sprinkle it on top. And you want to cook it for two or three minutes until it thickens. And I think it's time for me to turn this over. Let's see now. Look good. Now I'm going to lower the heat and let it cook on lower heat for about three, four minutes. Okay. See, this is this is ready now. Nice and juicy.
I have a little bit of crystallization. And I could put a dash of white wine in there. Or water. Just to melt the crystallization. Make sure that if you put white wine as I did here, you want to boil it as it did, you know. For a few seconds to eliminate the harshness of the wine and also the, the alcohol, you know. Okay. So now, this is a kind of homey type of, uh, type of dish. Here is one patty. Which one is nice? Darker or lighter? Ah. Just a little bit of the, the juice, you know, on top of it. That's it. Maybe a couple of the nuts here. I have nuts in there. So if I have more nuts, a few on top. And this is great, you know, this is the Italian sausage patty with the Mesa Harina at a main course. And my crispy pear tart should be ready now, so let's check it out. Okay. Yes. You can see that uh, a fair amount of, uh, or some of the sugar and butter run around a little bit here, but it's fine. The beauty of that type of thing is that it never sticks, I hope. Oh, that's it, you see. Nice and dry. So what we're going to do is glaze it with a little bit of apricot. I have an apricot glaze here, which is an apricot jam. I mean, often, you know, people buy glaze, and often the glaze is made with some of the fruit, usually a fair amount of, um, of uh, gelatin in it, you know? And uh, you, have, you warm it up, and after when you put it on the fruit, it never moves again, you know? You see those pastry shop, you know? So this is a very chunky type of uh, just apricot jam. I make my own and it's very chunky like this. I, I, I love it. So I don't mind if there is pieces of apricot on top of it. On the contrary, I love it. Okay, in the middle. Okay, cover it like this as much as you can. And we're going to transfer that to a. Uh, would be good in a on a board like this. If you have a little piece of burned dough around, like I have here, cut it off, you know, so it doesn't show too much. And we could put some uh, pistachio on top of it here. Maybe I'll crush the pistachio here a little bit. That's it. Put it on that simple pear tart. And that I would want to have that probably lukewarm just the way it is. It's a bit maybe hot now. But. You can see that it's very crunchy. Cut it on this side. That's it. Very dark underneath, beautiful. So this is the pear tart crisp. And with a menu, of course, I would want to have a glass of wine. I have a good Merlot here from California. As long as there is wine in my glass, I am happy. Don't be afraid to put your own twist on favorite ingredient that you find at the supermarket, so you make the dish your own. And happy cooking. 
Visit our website at kqed.org slash morefastfoodmyway to learn more about Jacques Pepin. You can watch shows online, view extra clips of Jacques in the Kitchen, print selected recipes from the series, and meet some of the people behind the scenes. Call 1-800-937-5387 or log on to channel9store.com to order the book with over 100 recipes and color photographs for $32 plus shipping or to order the complete series of all 26 shows on DVD for $39.99 plus shipping. Production funding for this series has been brought to you by Cuisinart with the next generation of food processors. From bread dough, to pizza, to stir fries, we do the work to save you time. Cuisinart, the next generation. And by Scharfenberger, makers of fine artisan dark chocolates, recipes available at scharfenberger.com. And by Spectrum Organics, a purveyor of fine culinary oils and condiments, Spectrum, the taste of goodness. And by OXO Good Grips, makers of kitchen tools that make everyday living easier. KQED television production.